If you're in the market for an e-rig, do not get one until you watch this video. Look, there are so many. There's so many options. I like to think that I have a good grasp on the market overall. But just in putting this list together, I've learned that there's so many more that I've never used and probably will never use because there's so many bad e-rigs out there that if you just walk into a shop and pick up any old thing, you're probably not getting a great one. I put 19 e-rigs on the list that we're going to rank today, but I'm telling you, there's like dozens and dozens of e-rigs that I saw just on Google looking to put this list together. Now, real quick before we get into this, if you want to see me use any of these, I do my session on Twitch every night, 9 p.m. Eastern. Link your Amazon Prime. Give me that Jeff Bezos e-rig money because I want to try more. And I didn't put any electric nectar collectors or honey straws on this list. I might do another list with just those. But all those would probably be C tier lists. Like it's just an inferior type of device. You would rather a dish atomizer than a straw atomizer any day of the week. I can't really link anything here. So if you want to check out e-rigs, go to my Twitch chat or Discord and type exclamation e-rig. First on the list, we have the G-Pen Connect. Overall, I would say G-Pen products could be better. They spend a lot more money on marketing and partnerships than they do on research and development. It's cool that you can partner with rappers, but it would be even cooler if you could make better devices. I do like the Connect. I like the concept of it that I can swap this little glass joint out, put it on 10 mil, 14 mil, and 18 mil glass. I can use it with other stuff, but the G-Pen Connect just has a lot of issues with it. I've had a couple of them and they just stopped working. And I've heard a ton of people say the same thing like it just stopped working one day like everything's clean it's all connected and fine and it just doesn't work anymore well the hits on it g pen products in general very hot this doesn't have a cleanable atomizer this you're supposed to just burn through your dabs and keep burning through them until you swap the atomizer out uh, i think i want to put the connect in i kind of want to say d tier like these could move around I, I was thinking c tier but maybe it's as low as d not great for the price definitely look at other stuff uh this one right here i think it's it's called the Luca Q7, but it's also the freeze pipe e-nail. You see, one of the things about a lot of these e-nails is some of them, they just buy a bulk order of some device they found in China on some wholesale website, and they just slap a logo on it. You can find a ton of e-rigs where it's the same e-rig as another brand. It just has a different logo on it or maybe a different package or something. Usually they have a different name. Sometimes they don't even change the name. Uh, but this one is actually pretty good. Similar concept here where I can put it on a lot of different devices. I don't quite remember if I could swap the tip on there and adjust it, but most things are about 14 anyway. I use the one from Freeze Pipe. I don't know if it's majorly different than some of the other ones. There are different versions, even though there are rebrands. But this is actually pretty good. You can clean the atomizer. You get good hits. I might put that at C tier. I was hesitant to put these types of devices on here because they don't have the glass included, but there's only a few of them. All right, this one right here, probably a lot of people haven't seen, but it's something I got a while ago. It's the Dabbox Pro. Now, this one right here is kind of interesting because it's like a few years old. I, I, I'm thinking it's like five years old by now, but a lot of the devices that are coming out now are still about as good or as bad as this, I will say. Like, it doesn't give great hits. It wasn't the best dabs I ever got. I think there were a couple of chamber options on here, but they weren't that great. I would say this is probably D tier. I don't even know if they make any more stuff but I, I know this is something that some people will probably look into. And if it's not on this list, I probably haven't used it. I haven't seen it. It's, it's too terrible to even consider. Or I just forgot it because I was too high. I don't know. Next on the list, we have the Dr. Dabber Boost Evo. Now, Dr. Dabber is another one where I feel like they could make better products. I feel like they have a lot of money spent on marketing and not as much spent on the research and development. And I feel like they're one of the longer brands or I've known about them for a while. They're like pretty deep into the game, but they're not making great products. Why? It still kind of blows my mind that their Switch is probably their best product came out a few years ago and then they've released the Boost and then they've released the XS, which I think are worse. Like make a better one. Stop making worse and worse stuff. I don't know what's happening. But the Boost isn't all that bad. You can actually customize the hits 20 to 40 seconds. You probably want to lean towards 40. I think it has like five temperature options. You can do a little bit with the glass. You could swap it out and give it a different style. It's not terrible overall, but it's not great. I feel like it could be so much better. I'm going to put this on B tier, but the hits on it are kind of close to this freeze pipe one. All right, this one I got to talk about. This is the Dab X Go. This looks cooler than a lot of the things on the list. It's got like a metallic body. It like feels good. It, it looks like something you'd see in like a space movie where they're dabbing. I don't know how to explain it. It looks cool. 
The hits on it's the same as the G Pen Connect. Like the atomizer is the same. There's a lot of forty dollar vape pens that have the same atomizer. They hit the same as this. It just has the glass topper on it. They really took like a thirty forty dollar pen and they dress it up in this big old body to make it look like an e rig. And it hits like every thirty dollar ceramic pen. Like I don't know, it's bad. I put it at D tier. It's wild to me how expensive this is. Like all the money is probably like on the looks, the metallic body, and the magnets. And the glass looks pretty intense, but like, bro, the hits are so bad. Focus on the hits, focus on the atomizer. All right, next on the list, we have the G Pen Higher. This is better than the Connect, but <laughs> I don't know if it's gonna go much higher on the list. It was weird that when this came out, I was like, the name sounds familiar. There's an old e-rig from like years ago that was called the Higher. It's not G Pen. It's like another brand. I think the brand is higher. I remember it like took batteries and it had like a little glass rig that attached to like this base that had the batteries in it. I don't know if like they bought that technology or they stole the name or something, but like we got the G pen higher. This does flower. I think out of the box it does concentrate and you have to buy the flower attachment. Again, G pen make better products. The G stands for glowy because all their devices hit concentrate so hot. I have no idea what they're doing when they test these devices out. Cause it's like, oh, we got a, we got a little prototype here. Let's test it out. Oh, let me put on the lowest setting. Wow, that was the hottest dab I've ever had in my life. All right, cool. Let's produce a bunch of them and sell them. Like, I don't, I don't understand how they, how they keep doing it. Like all of their concentrate devices hit so hot. I haven't used the Rome. I will say that's one I get asked about a lot. I've heard most people complain about it and say it's not good. And usually the only people that have nice things to say about it haven't tried anything else to compare it to. So it's like, maybe you don't know how bad it is. But the G Pen higher, I will say it's better than the Connect, but not by much. I do like that you can do a couple of things with it, flower vaping. I do like that this works similarly to the Connect where I can put it on other devices. But they gave it like an e now look. You have this control box, but you really can only set five temperature settings. You should be able to dial it up and down by degree for how much it cost. So they really missed the mark on this. They could have gave you more temperature control. And I don't know if I said this, but most of these devices I have an individual video on. So if you want to hear me talk more about it in more detail, just search the device name or, or just look through my channel. But I'm thinking this is about C tier. It's better than the connect, but yeah, I don't think it's as good as the boost. All right, next on the list, the blinker e-rig, all right? We've got the Yocan Pillar. Yocan's one of those companies that makes a ton of devices, like a ton of stuff. And like, I'm not sure if any of them are good. Like I hear people talk about different ones here and there, but everyone I've tried, I'm like, I mean, it gives me vapor, but like the hit was terrible. This thing is weird. It literally, it does like a blinker. It's like a quick little glowy. Like some of these device makers, when they go to making it, they're not modeling the hit after what you would get on a standard rig. They're not like, all right, so you would torch it up. You'd get a nice vapor for a decent amount of time. They're modeling it after like the hit you would get off of a vape pen doing a blinker. They're like, all right, so I got to get instant vapor. It's got to be really hot and unenjoyable and last about 10 seconds and then it's over. Like, I don't know why they're doing it, but they're like, they're making bad damn devices. This is, I, this is D tier, I think. I don't know. This, bro, this one might be poop tier. I don't, like I'm putting this here, but like, bro, this one is more expensive than all, like you can get all three of these for the price of this one. Like, I'm not kidding. This one is crazy. Yeah, you're going down to poop tier. I'm done. Okay, we have the OG Puffco Peak, all right? This one is still better than a lot of options on the list. It's still available. They do have a newer version. They have the Peak Pro, but this is still a good player in the game. It does decent hits. I still have mine from 2018, still works. I'm having a hard time ranking it here. I'm like, does it, does it deserve A tier? It is pretty good. Like I genuinely think it's better than the Boost Evo, but do I think it's a whole tier better? I'm gonna put it at A tier right now, but it might just be the top of B tier. Let's keep running. All right, this is a device. It, it has a bunch of names. Uh, I know it as the, what is it? The, the Como Max or something. There's a few other devices, or this device has a few other names. It's one of those rebranded devices I've seen a lot of people sell, but it should, it's low cost. It's not terrible, but it's like, it's not great. I Before I put this in its ranking, I do have to say like, you're not gonna get big hits out of this. This isn't for like a really good dab. This is really like <laughs> on the go portability. Like <laughs> I got a tiny little thing. I kind of want to put it on C tier here because I like it better than these other ones. 
but you probably will get a bigger hit on these other devices just because they might handle a little more. That doesn't mean it's a better hit, but I remember I had to do like a few smaller hits on this to kind of get like a decent dab going. Okay, next on the list, we have the Utilian 8. I never tried the Utilian 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, or 6, but I can tell you from using the 8, I don't want to. The Utilian 8 I made a video on earlier this year, I called it the worst e-rig of 2023. That's because it came out this year and oh my God, it's so bad. They've had years and years of information to go off of when designing this device. And they're like, you know what? Let's ignore all the good stuff and just make something that looks cool. This device looks really cool. Like it looks cool. I think it looks cooler than most of the other devices on here out of the box. But oh my God, the hits on it are so bad. It uses a good atomizer, which is wild. My number one complaint with a lot of these are they have just a garbage atomizer. But I know for a fact that the atomizer in this one is good. They literally just like programmed it wrong, right? It gives me like the vibe of somebody having like a really nice TV or something and they just have the settings all wonky or whatever, like the brightness way up and the contrast all the way down and it just doesn't look good and you're like this is a nine thousand dollar tv it should look good this gives me that vibe like it, it should do way better than it does but like it's not doing good i'm gonna put this on poop tier and something about these two they look so cool right i feel so bad for somebody that walks into the head shop and goes huh that looks cool that looks nice and you're like literally looking at the worst e-rigs Next, we have the Luca Unicorn. This is for the 2.0 that I've used. I haven't used the Mini, although I kind of I kind of suspect the Mini might be better from what I've heard people tell me. But the Luca Unicorn, uh, the hits on it, they're so bad. They're so bad. Like for the price, it's so wild to me how you get away with selling something so bad for the price. Like Luca's one of those companies, they have like a ton of stuff, but most of them are not good. I think they do sell like this, this little Q7 thing right here. They do sell a version of that. I haven't used theirs, but it looks identical to the freeze pipe one. I'm just assuming that's a rebrand. That's probably decent, but this unicorn, bro, it's poop tier. All right, it's poop tier. I don't think any of these other ones came out in 2023. I think this came out in 2021 and this came out in 22, but this came out this year and they're all bad. I don't have the dragon egg on this list. I I've heard a lot of mixed reviews from people on it. Again, it's one of those cases where the people that usually give it praise maybe don't have something better to compare it to. But a lot of people have told me there's no flavor on the Dragon Egg. And it's like a, a cheap a little $100 device. But I might do a one-off video where I try that out just to give my opinion because still a lot of people ask me about it and it has a cool name dragon egg all right the aspire dab i almost forgot to put this on the list I, I i'm hoping i didn't forget anything i'm probably gonna get to the end of it and go oh yeah that but aspire makes a couple of dab rigs i like the technology they use electromagnetic waves or using induction heating i like the technology and the idea behind them but the hits on them are, they're not great. I feel like it could be better and I feel like I should have been able to get like a better hit. Like with the technology that they're using, it seems like there's like maybe a little bit of a learning curve to get the right hit on it. There is another company that used induction heating for their rigs, but they made like a $1,700 dab rig. It was literally like a briefcase, like a high powered thing. They're not in production anymore. I don't think I was gonna buy one for a video, but like the price tag was crazy. But they also, use induction heating and it was what a lot of people like growers specifically people that just have a ton of hash to go through they said it was like some of the best dabs ever i never got a chance to use one maybe in the future but like i feel like the learning curve on induction heating for concentrates is a little high and they just haven't been able to execute yet but maybe eventually they'll get it i would say this is c tier and maybe i put it above the other stuff here it, i don't know it might be b tier it's kind of as good as the boost like the hits on it okay but like not great and the the Aspire wand, this is like the same thing except broken down. Like this is designed to where you have a special bowl that you can put on any rig. The hits are about the same as the Aspire dab, the rig over here, but you could just use this kind, you know, like the connect or the higher where you put it on another rig. I'd say about the same hits, not too off, not too different. Maybe I'll put it here. Nah, we'll just leave it right there for now. I do hope they keep at it. I do like the technology, but like get your hits down. 
Get the hit going. All right, next on the list, we have the Dr. Dabber XS. It's kind of weird how big it is for it being called the XS. Like this thing right here is so much tinier. This thing is smaller than the XS. This is smaller than the XS. This you have to put on a rig, but like it's pretty big for it being called the XS. Let's see. So the hits on this one, they're, they're okay. It's not like the G pen where every single one is too hot. The high one is pretty hot. But the 20 second dab on it is what gets me like, I don't, I can't get behind a 20 second dab. I don't know. On an E-rig. Like it, if you're, if you're doing a banger and like your nail just loses heat in 20 seconds. Yeah, that kind of makes sense. It happens on thinner bangers. But when I have an electronic nab rig, it's supposed to give me like a decent dab for at least 40 seconds. Come on. But I guess the excess is for extra small hits because you're only getting a 20 second hit instead of a 60 second hit like a real dub. Like a, it being a third the size of the hit makes sense for you wanting to call it the excess. But I think they are really going with the size. Uh, I think I want to put this on C tier. I'm going to put it above this one just because it's all inclusive. I don't need to get anything else. I think if somebody's interested in this, maybe try to get used to dry dabs because the water percolation on it is underwhelming. <laughs> I feel like it, it just gets in the way. All right, the Dr. Dabber Switch. This is one of the ones on the list that I don't own. I've used it here and there. Some of my friends had one. I've used other people's, but it's one of those devices. I wasn't that impressed by it, and I, I don't think that I'm going to go out of my way and get one of my own. First off, I have to say, this is by far the largest device on the rig. Like, this is humongous compared to all of the other ones. Like, you could stack a few of these devices on top of each other, and the Dr. Dabber switch is going to be so much bigger. Like, just the glass portion on it is bigger than most of these e-rigs on here. Like, it's actually huge. It does flower and concentrate. I, I'm not really a fan of devices that do flower and concentrate. Sometimes I feel like they just do a bad job at both instead of doing both of them really well. The G Pen Higher does both, but you put on a different chamber for it, so it gives you a little bit of a different feel. But again, like it, it doesn't do either of them very well. This doesn't do the flower vaping and the concentrate hits very well. I will say it's probably better for concentrate than flower. It's probably the best Dr. Dabber device, but like, bro, it's supposed to be portable and, it, and it's, it's huge. It is humongous. It's heavy. Honestly, for it being so big, you'd think it would handle like more people sashing. Like some of these devices aren't great if you're trying to have five people hit it back to back like all right now it's your turn now it's your turn some of these devices genuinely need a moment to cool off or they need a rest in between you can't just keep running them back to back to back this one i was under the impression that you might be able to it's a little bit bigger right it's got i think like a party mode or something on there but like the hits on it aren't anything crazy it can handle larger dabs it does have a bigger dish than some of these other devices but like if we're just comparing like a portable e-rig that's something you can take on the go and get nice reasonable hits with like this is not that great like i kind of want to put it on a tier because of how the hits are but like, bro, the size of it is so big. The cost is crazy. We'll, we'll leave it at the top of B tier. Next on the list, we have the Core 2.1. I haven't used the 2.0, which is similar and has a rebuildable atomizer. And then there is the Dabtech Duvo, which is the same as the Core 2.0. But this is the Crossing Core 2.1. This is one of those devices where people buy in bulk and they just brand it. So there might be a few other brands that sell this same one. But I know it as the Crossing Core 2.1. I just dropped a video on it recently. This, in my opinion, is one of the best devices in the price range. Like a, a lot of these devices are over 200. This is under 200 and better than a lot of the stuff that's over. It does have like a 3D style chamber. The atomizer heats the sides in addition to the bottom. So you are getting like good vapor production across the whole atomizer some of them just heat the bottom but as we go into the future more and more devices hopefully are going to learn from other companies and make better and better atomizers now it's kind of hard for me to rank this one uh i feel like if i could customize the time and the temperature like i can on some of the other devices a little bit more specifically like I only have a 60 second dab, I can't change that. And I only have four temperatures. I feel like that really limits it. And the way they can truly take this device to the next level is giving me more time and temperature control. And then maybe giving me a better piece of glass to go with it because I don't like the default one. But I would say this is on A tier and it's better than the old Puffco. Like they both have four temperature settings. I think this one does a 40 second hit. This one does a 60 second hit. But the atomizer on this one out of the box is better. 
and it's like a hundred dollars cheaper all right next on the list is the puffco proxy so the proxy is an interesting one it's one of the only ones on here that is meant for dry dabs obviously you could do a dry dab with any of them just don't put water in it it's one of the only ones out of the box that does dry dabs obviously there's a lot of water attachments i have some for it they make adapters and a ton of different stuff for it but you know what dry dabs aren't that bad i mean they filtered out all the stuff that you're trying not to inhale through the extraction process right you just got the concentrate of what you want so there's nothing wrong with with vaping that and not using any water filtration there's nothing wrong with it but some people just can't handle the heat I like a proxy. I don't really like using it as much with the water attachments and stuff. Like some about just holding the dry pipe. Like I feel like an esteemed gentleman. Like there's there's some there's some classy to it, right? And it also gives good hits. We like have a 3D style chamber that gives you a nice good vapor. It doesn't hit as good as the Peak Pro, but it hits really well. I do like this device. If I could only have one e-rig on the list, it probably wouldn't be this, but I like that I have all of them just about and I like that I have this. Um I'm going to put this on A tier because the hits are pretty close to the old Peak. I think it does like 35 40 second hits pretty close close to what this does you can't really customize it it has four temperature modes but then it has like the boost mode which is just a little bit hotter i guess well we've made it this far on the list and nothing has made it to s tier yet hmm what's gonna happen these seem to be spread out pretty evenly I, I, i'm not gonna lie so the last two on the list here are the focus carta 2 and the puffco peak pro these are probably two of the most popular e-rigs probably two of the best i would have to say but which one is better so I think a lot of e-rigs out there are knockoffs of Puffco. They kind of follow what they do. They model the style of their rig after. You can find so many glass top e-rigs that have this little cone top. So many. Where it's like, yeah, we, we know what you modeled after. Like this looks like a reimagined version. This is a reimagined version. This is a tiny little reimagined version. So a lot of e-rigs, in my opinion, are a knockoff of a Puffco. And in my opinion, the Focus Carta is the best knockoff. The one thing that I, I wish, I wish it was just cheaper. I don't know too much about the production and all that, but I feel like it could be cheaper or I feel like they could have approach of how do we cut costs and sell a lower cost device? Because that would really set them apart from Puffco. A lot of people like to compare these like iPhone versus Android and whatnot. Where there maybe are some real comparisons there. But I feel like Carter should go the route of let's get rid of some of the flashier stuff that we don't need. And see if we could just sell like the best low cost device. Or say F that and let's make something better than Puffco. Nobody's doing that. It seems like they just took a lot of notes from the Peak Pro for this one. Like, let's get the RGBs. Let's get the app on there. And you know what? Let's see if we can stick a screen on. So I'm going to talk about these two at the same time. Because, like, <laughs> out of the box, the card is about $50 cheaper. And it has a 3D style chamber that comes with it. The Puffco Peak does not. You have to spend extra money to upgrade the chamber. Which means you have a backup chamber, right? If something goes down, that's the first part that's going to break your atomizer. But you do have to upgrade the the chamber out of the box so i would say both of these hit about the same with the ability to adjust the time and temperature you can really get good hits out of both of these but i would say at the end of the day if you if you put in all your money and upgrades upgrade the glass upgrade whatever you can on either of the devices that the puffco peak pro is the better one i wish they were shipping them with the 3d chamber so i could really say that out of the box it's better but it's kind of close but at the end of the day the biggest issue that i've experienced with the carta is the battery doesn't last as long and i do most of my session sitting here at my desk live on twitch you should come session with me after 9 p.m eastern but when most people are looking at these devices they're looking for something that they can take on the go that's going to last them without the need of being able to charge it or being near a wall outlet so you can plug it in so i will say both of these devices are s tier but i just i like the puffco more if i could only only have one of these it would be the puffco i have them both i'm not sponsored by either one so if you're looking to get the best of the best device it, it really it's costly like the total cost of my e-rig setup right now is like over 600 with all the upgrades on it but it really is the best one i have so i have videos on most of these individually 
I don't really have links and codes for all these, but if you want to read more and learn more about some e-rigs, go to my Twitch chat or Discord and type exclamation e-rig or exclamation boom. Link your Amazon Prime to your Twitch. Come get high with me after 9 p.m. Eastern. And I know we talked a lot about concentrate devices, but if you want to hear about my favorite flower device, check out this video right here. I think I like this device more than almost all the e-rigs on the list. Have a lit day, my dudes.